everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and it's time to leave no dye behind. In my dedicated stainless steel pot right here, I have uh, approximately eight to 10 cups of water and we're gonna go ahead and add a nice splash of white vinegar. Today is very much a throw things in the pot, dip dyes some yarn and we will see what happens. Now I have a leftover green dye, not very much of the color, that is left over from a recent Dye Pot PS episode. I'm not sure exactly what colors are in here. It was mostly avocado green. Um, there may have been actually a little bit of purple or something in there. You can see there's a little bit of sediment left in the mason jar, so I'm going to go dissolve this in some warm tap water. Avocado is a tricky color, and I'm not sure how apparent it is right now that the dye left in the cup is not that beautiful teal, but it is now more of a rust brown. And that happens because I think part of the dye just isn't soluble, and so I find that it will crash out of the color that I've mixed and sort of wait till the end, which means that Avocado is a tricky color, but I think it is one of the advanced colors of the Dharma Acid Dye list. Just as a reminder, we are using dedicated dye equipment, which means that nothing I use here is ever used for food. This is something that's really important when you are dealing with commercial dyes. If you would like to learn more about my favorite tools and equipment uh, that I purchased dedicated for dyeing yarn, I do have a link to a blog post in the video description, and I also have affiliate links to some of my most commonly used items in there as well. My goal is to make everything as easy and accessible as possible, even when I'm doing a throw everything together in a pot and we'll see what kind of colors we create. Now. I'm gonna let this wait and warm up a little bit more so we can start dip dyeing. Today we are gonna dye some Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. Probably the yarn base I dye the most and I will have it, uh, my affiliate link linked in the video description. I pre-soaked it for about 20 to 30 minutes in just some plain tap water, added on one of my favorite reusable nylon zip ties. And even though we're not even quite at a simmer, the pot is definitely hot or warm. Uh, and so we're going to start dip dyeing this yarn. Ooh, there's more pigment than I thought. Uh, the dye that I had in the jar was probably about a half percent stock by the time it was in there. So I had uh, added dye in and then I added a bit of water to dilute a one what was originally a 1% stock solution. And well, I didn't really know how pigmented it was going to be and wow, it's a lot more pigmented than I thought, which is awesome. I had a skein of Dyer Supplier Marled Sock Yarn on hand that I considered using for this project, but I was afraid it was going to be too pastel, and I've used that colorway with a lot of different pastel things uh, in the last year or so, and so I wanted to do something that was more, that would show up better on that. But man, now I'm regretting it because it would have been, this would have been awesome on that yarn. Oh well, I'll have to use that for another project. Uh, there's still a hint of some color in there, but it has mostly cleared, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the yarn and sort of smush it around a little bit. When I'm dip dyeing, I do reduce the heat, even if we're not at a boil, just because if I have this burner on power boil, it gets uncomfortable for me to do my thing above the pot but I'm going to turn the heat back up so we can bring the, the temperature up and we'll check back in in the yarn in about 10 minutes. While we're waiting, I thought I'd just pop in for a quick little life update. It is currently mid-May 2020 and there are still so many unknowns going on with how the summer is going to go. Uh, currently, I am homeschooling my two young boys while I'm filming and my husband's working from home too. And so I'm not dyeing as much yarn as I would if they were at school, even though Ryder only goes part-time, but 
Uh, still, my filming schedule has been significantly reduced. Thankfully, I am confident that I am going to be able to keep up with my two video a week schedule. I publish new content on Tuesday and Friday mornings, and I've been able to keep up with that so far. So I'm actually really happy about that. And I think I should be able to keep up with that schedule through the whole summer, even if the kids are at home with me the whole time. The one thing from all of this that is becoming a bit more apparent is that since I'm not dyeing as much yarn, I am not able to do as large shop restocks as I normally do, which means that my shop inventory is slowly getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And things like Dye Pot Weekly sponsorship slots are almost always out of stock. Uh, I'm restocking them a lot slower than I normally do, and when I do release more slots they sell out almost immediately, which I greatly, greatly appreciate because that really does help me uh, continue to produce more content. Anyway, this is a little update of where things stand. I'm not planning on changing much of anything at the moment. Anyway, before we head back to the yarn, I just want to add that I hope you guys are all doing well, and I haven't given you guys a good socially distant hug from me to you in a little while. Uh, wishing you all health, and yeah, please don't feel pressured to shop with me right now. Um, I continue to share, you know, how to find and support the channel, but again, please don't feel any pressure, and the biggest way you guys can all support the channel is by subscribing, liking, commenting on the videos. Uh, that helps the channel grow, helps more people see it, and is beyond the biggest way that any of you can support the content that you see here. So subscribe and ring that bell to turn on notifications. The 10 minutes are up and it's currently 11, 11 a.m. I love 11, 11, so just had to throw that out there. Uh, this is beautiful. I do see a few brown hints around the pale end, but oh, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous color. I'm now gonna turn off the heat and go ahead and leave the yarn in the pot to cool. You could definitely remove it at this point. That would not be a problem at all, or if you know you're not going to be able to wash it for a number of hours anyway, then you may as well leave it in the pot so it can get that extra heat and time. But this is just a lovely, lovely colorway used with some leftover dye that I had mixed for another project. All of the color in the pot has cleared and now we can wash our yarn, which again is much, much more pigmented than I thought. I am washing it in some cool tap water and I'm going to add a little bit of some dish soap. The brand of soap is not important. Uh, you could use something like Synthropol, which is recommended for dyers, but uh, for I just use whatever dish soap I have on hand. Although my personal preference for clear soap is so that way I can show if we're seeing any bleeding. Um, so that way we know that if there's a tint that's not caused by the soap. So, but not everyone films their dyeing videos. But anyway, I am going to rinse out uh, the soap. I'll do probably two more rinses of this yarn, put the yarn through my spin dryer, and then hang it up to dry, and we'll come back and take a look at the finished colorway. Here is the finished dry yarn, which surprisingly is fairly unbroken. I mean, there's almost some taupe hints in it, but overall the green is very, very beautiful. I'm actually surprised the colors didn't break more. But, I don't know, I, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous green. Maybe since the dye was all added to hot water, those browns that crash out had a chance to dissolve, so we got more even coverage than when I've done some of the other applications. Because a lot of times it seems like the browns and avocado will settle to the bottom of whatever I've mixed, which gives us that more beautiful teal color and then brown spots once I get towards the end, and those actually make it into the hot water. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this episode of Leave No Dye Behind, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. And if you're a huge fan of Chemnitz content and want to support the channel on another level, we have a Patreon. You can find more information but from the link in the video description and in the iCard on the top right hand corner of your screen. If you'd like to watch me not leave any dye behind, so leave no dye behind some more, <laughs> I have a whole playlist of these leftover dye videos. Some of these colorways end up being my favorite because it is very freeing to just 
take the color and play and see where we end up. And I love our colorway here. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.